In the grand history of all the games I have ever played, there have been quite a few that I did not like. Maybe that's because the story sucked. Maybe the gameplay was boring. Maybe it was a buggy mess that ran at 10 frames a second on low settings. Maybe Ubisoft made it. Maybe Activision Blizzard made it. Maybe it was the Kung Fu Panda 2 DS game with exclusive DSi content. Maybe it was just bad. Or maybe it was The Witness. A game about solving line puzzles on a very pretty island. Hundreds of puzzles. A never-ending number of puzzles. The same grid, over and over and over again, interspersed with some very pretty scenery before you once again lock your view to a grid, where your reward for solving a puzzle is more puzzles, and more puzzles. Here's another puzzle, and another one. Cool, that was a difficult puzzle. Here's your reward, another fucking puzzle. It's a game so far up its own ass it comes out the other end. It's a mystery game with no resolution. It's a game that ends with either a massive middle finger, and a pretentious one at that, it's got a bow tie and a wine glass and everything, or the true ending, which is literally just, it was all a dream. Are you fucking kidding me? Whoa, I keep seeing patterns, isn't that crazy? Fucking no it isn't! That's just the Tetris effect, the very famous phenomenon where people who've played Tetris for too long start playing Tetris with their biscuit covered. Why did you set up all this intrigue and this mystery and make me watch clips from old BBC2 documentaries just to end it with award-winning game designer Jonathan Blow fondling all the circles in his house? Are you insane? Did you make this game just to hurt me? What is your address, Jonathan? I need to have a stone wall with you! When people ask me, as they often do at parties and the like, Hey man, what's the worst game you've ever played? My mind immediately goes to the witness. Which isn't really fair. There are lots and lots of games I've played over the years that are dramatically worse than the line puzzle game that most people quite like. It functions. It looks nice. It isn't a complete abject failure on every level. But when you ask someone what their least favourite game is, or movie is, or album, TV show, piece of art, celebrity, child, you're probably not going to say the one that is actually the worst on paper. You're going to say the one that feels custom made to piss you off specifically, that pushes your buttons in all of the wrong ways, that makes you want to murder someone. <laughs> that is the witness for me. I despise this game. And yet, I keep fucking playing it. I hate it. I hate it with every bone in my body. I could write a 14-page essay going off on one about how shit it is, but every couple years or so, I'll still download it again and give it another go. And guess what? I still hate it. I get to this specific apple puzzle, or the desert, or the shapes, and I go, fuck this game, uninstalled. And then I do it again, and again. And again, and then I'm playing a parody game, laughing at all the funny jokes and agreeing, ah, yes indeed, The Witness is shit. But maybe if I give it one more go, why do I do it? Self-harm? Maybe I've got early onset dementia? Maybe I've got Stockholm Syndrome? I don't know. All I know is that I've had this thing rattling around in my head since I finished it in 2018. I have held a grudge against a video game for half a decade. And part of the reason for that is because it beat me. It fucking beat me. Now don't get me wrong, I did finish it. I'm not just sitting here complaining about a game I couldn't even finish. I did cheat a little bit. I was 15 at the time, so you can't blame me that much. But this game is fucking hard, man. These puzzles would drive any mortal man mad. They're designed to push you to your limit, to make you snap. And, <laughs> and I snapped, I got to the shapes, and I couldn't do it anymore. Walk through time, baby! If a puzzle was too hard, I'll tab out to IGN. I'm all lost and confused. IGN doesn't even make any sense. Call me a 12-year-old white nationalist who hasn't discovered 4chan yet, because I'm once again heading on down to IGN. By the time I got to the end of the game, basically every single puzzle I came across, I solved via walkthrough. 
which may or may not have affected my enjoyment of the experience. And look, there was no way I was going to beat it otherwise. I didn't even realize that environmental puzzles were in the game. So God knows I did not have the brain power to do this shit, but I had to know how it ended. I had to see it for myself. I knew it was probably going to be shit. I knew it was probably just going to be a massive middle finger with a bow tie and a wine glass and a creative arts degree and whatever else, but I had to see it. I had to see if there was an answer to all of the questions the game had set up. And, uh, and no, it's worse than that actually. It's an anti-answer. Let's fly all the way back to the start of the game and reset every single puzzle the IGN wiki guide, I, I mean you, completed. One by one. And let's answer nothing. Fuck you. Pure misery. That is the only way I can describe the end of that playthrough. I cheated, and the game cheated right back by cheating me out of an ending. So, uh, hi class. Uh, what did we learn today? Well, uh, I'm an idiot. That was already pretty obvious. Um, I'm insecure. <laughs> that was also pretty obvious. And the uh, big one. The witness is fucking dog shit. One out of ten. Fuck this game. So this year, I decided to do an experiment. I'm going to beat this fucking video game properly this time. No walkthroughs, no guides, doing the hidden puzzles and taking my time. If I get stuck on a puzzle, I'll leave it and go somewhere else. No quitting the game because a specific solution drives me mad or an audio log is pretentious as all hell. A poet once said, I have to beat it. I need to stop this game going around my head like a tumble dryer. So I did. I beat it. I did the whole video game. I did the opening, I did the symmetry stuff, I did the desert, I did the shapes, I did the keep, then I went ahead and just did the rest of the game. I got all 11 lasers, I did some of the extra stuff, I got both endings, I got a bunch of the hidden puzzles, I didn't do the time challenge, not even gonna attempt that, and I missed a bunch of other puzzles here or there. Nope. But I did everything else. Without a guide. And somehow, by an absolute miracle, I enjoyed my time doing it. There was the odd puzzle here or there that got under my skin, and I definitely liked some sections way more than others, but I had fun playing it. It didn't drive me insane. I didn't get angry at it. I laughed a couple times at how psychotic it was, but I didn't get angry. And for a game that used to feel like doing maths homework five years above my level, that's an absolute win. I actually kind of like The Witness now. Which is a sentence I never thought I would be able to utter in my life, and yet here we are. It just sort of clicked this time. And I think a big part of that is because I actually played it correctly. Whoa, I know, very obvious, right? If you play the video game and don't get Chloe Rad, Brendan Graber, and 5.1 thousand randos to play it for you, you might enjoy it more. What a concept! The Witness is meant to be a test of your patience and your skill, and the reward is the satisfaction you get from proving that, hey, this sadistic puzzle? I solved that. Because I'm a genius. There's no reward beyond that, it's just more puzzles. So if you look up an answer, any answer, just a, just a little tiny peek at IGN, you've ruined it because suddenly solving a puzzle has no value. We have unlocked is the next puzzle, which is probably going to be even harder, so, you know, might as well skip that. And this one's difficult, might as well skip that. Well, they didn't even explain the mechanic for this one, that's bad puzzle design, so let's skip that. Why bother trying to solve a difficult puzzle and bashing my head against a wall for four hours when www.ign.com forward slash wikis forward slash the dash witness can give me the answer in two seconds flat? It's a downward spiral, and it's the main reason why I hated this game as much as I did. So, what's the game like when you're not constantly alt-tabbing out? Well, simple. Dopamine. Lots of dopamine. Getting top marks in around a fortnight is one thing. <laughs> Winning the lottery is one thing. But you haven't felt pure ecstasy until you solve this deranged thing. These puzzles are psychotic, these puzzles are evil, these puzzles will take you to the far reaches of hell and back, but they're also really clever and smart and creative. 
The amount they get out of a very simple grid and a line is amazing, especially when it starts to cascade and different puzzle types merge with entirely separate ones to form something even more fucked. They'll introduce a puzzle concept in these very simple, easy to understand panels, make the shape with the line, then it'll get a little bit more confusing. And more, and more, and more, now there's more than one shape, now you can rotate it, now you can move the shapes around the grid as long as they're part of one big shape, and by that point I'm like, but then it just keeps going and getting even more sadistic until you get to the end of the game and you get handed this one. This is a puzzle with four smaller puzzles inside it and the shapes you form inside the smaller puzzles will change the shapes you get to use in the big puzzle. Also, it's a reflection puzzle. I'm gonna go make a cup of tea, don't hang yourself while I'm gone. I had to use Photoshop to solve this one and a good fear for the rest of the shape puzzles, and I am not ashamed to admit that. I really struggle to visualize stuff, especially if it involves keeping track of a lot of different things at once, which is exactly what all of these shape puzzles require you to do. This one specifically forces you to keep track of seven different shapes, two of which you can rotate, six of which have a corresponding shape, and fit them into a symmetrical pattern. I can't do that in my brain, which is why when I got to this section in 2018, I went, Fuck that! I was a stubborn little fella who wanted to do it the smart way, that being no notes, no screenshots, no Photoshop, no Microsoft Paint, no asking a friend, hey man, how the fuck do I do this? No nothing. If I couldn't do it, that was bad game design, off to IGN I go. But now I'm older, and have accepted the fact that I'm a moron, and now I do little arts and crafts projects in Photoshop instead of screaming obscenities at the screen. Now that's a character arc! Some people might call this cheating. I don't give a shit. I'm glad you have a very big brain and can solve all the puzzles the normal way, but this makes the game 10 times more fun for me. Other than not looking up a guide every five seconds, this was the single biggest reason why I actually enjoyed myself this time round. Because instead of the gameplay just being staring at a grid for 10 minutes until my Pentium processor brain puts all the pieces together, I had the opportunity to literally put the pieces together in a way I'm far more comfortable with. I even did it for a couple ones that really didn't need it. Like, I could have worked that out the normal way, but have you heard about the warp tool in Photoshop? That shit crazy! The shapes went from being one of my least favorite sections in the game to one of my favorites, solely because of this. The psychedelic color puzzles in the mountain went from being something that was borderline impossible for me to actually feasible. And this puzzle, the Hitler special, went from being the single worst moment of the game for me to one of the highlights. I cheered after solving this thing. Not a little woo or a yeah, I mean full on guttural screech. Yes! Yes! Ah! That's what makes this game so good. The puzzles in the quarry where you have to leave something unsatisfied are brilliant, the symmetry stuff is cool, the treehouse is a never ending nightmare, but the sun mechanic is pretty good. But easily my favourite puzzles are the ones that use the environment as part of the solution. All of them are fucking stellar. The maze puzzles where you have to run around a real hedge maze and then trace that into a grid are so easy a six year old could probably do them. But they're really fun and creative, then they start adding layers on top of that and it gets even better. The puzzles about tracing shadows or dodging around branches are brilliant, probably my single favourite set in the entire game. Like the maze puzzles, a lot of these are very easy, but it's the way they're presented that makes them so fun. I love this one that makes you think you have to follow the branch all the way around, but really what it wants you to do is just this. The jungle is really cool on paper, turning the grid into an audio waveform? That is absolutely genius! And in an alternate world, these would probably be some of my favourite puzzles in the game. But slight problem, I'm either very tone deaf or an idiot. ToneDeafTest.com is leaning towards the latter. I lied earlier when I said I got all 11 lasers. I wanted to get all 11 lasers. I almost did, but this section was just too much for me. I cannot, for the life of me, tell the difference between the mid-tone and the high and the low. I just can't do it. I brute forced the first few, but once I got to the one with a fire alarm blaring in the background, and a gorilla screaming, and a dude listening to Ed Sheeran in his car at full volume, I threw in the towel. I like these, I think they're really cool, but I couldn't do them, sorry. 
The mountain has tons of really creative puzzles, and a couple shit ones. There's the previously mentioned one from the desk of Hitler which slaps, but I have to highlight the two bridge ones, these are genius. At first glance, they're a pretty standard grid puzzle, but then it hits you with the twist. The path you scroll on the panel forms a bridge in the real world. Then the second one throws in a second bridge, and you gotta run back and forth between the two sides of the room to change each bridge separately. It, it's fucking evil, but it's brilliant. The parts where the witness actually justifies its reason for being a 3D open world video game, and not just, you know, a Sudoku book, are where it really shines. I don't mind the other puzzle types, most of them I really like, but there's something so fascinating about the puzzles that pull you out of the grid and force you to look at the environment. I've seen stuff that kinda looks like this a thousand times, in newspapers, on cereal boxes, in Peppa Pig magazines. I've never seen something like this before. That's what makes them so cool. And if that was it, that would be more than enough. But The Witness has a secret little trick up its sleeve, something it never makes obvious, something it hides in plain sight, waiting for you to randomly stumble across. For some people, that might happen 10 minutes in. For some people, it might happen 10 hours in. For some people, it won't happen at all, and they'll have to live with the regret for the rest of their lives that they completely missed the best magic trick in the entire history of video games, and only found out about it when watching the Joseph Anderson video. At least it wasn't IGN. Here's that hedge maze from earlier. Notice anything peculiar? Out of place? No? Well, look, it's me. I'm hiding in the screenshot. Look at me go! Also, there's a line puzzle baked into the hedge maze, and you can click on it and interact with it and solve it like a puzzle, and also the entire island is filled with these. Even the videos have them in. And when you finish one, it does a very nice animation, and I like them a lot. I made fun of the secret ending for basically just pointing out that the Tetris effect is a thing. And I still stand by that, this ending sucks. But actually incorporating that idea into the game itself, where you're not just seeing patterns because you've been staring at line puzzles for 15 hours, but because they're actually there and you can touch them and interact with them, that is genius. That's genius with a capital G and a capital E and a capital N and a capital I and a capital U and a capital S and a capital exclamation mark at the end. I love how some of these turn into puzzles in and of themselves, where you have to change something in the environment to get them to work. There's all the ones that you have to solve while cruising around on your little boat, which are very cool to do, if a bit finicky. I really like this one at the monastery, where this one dot forms so many different puzzles depending on how you look at it. There's this one in the marsh, which is such a pain to set up, but once you've got it, it's so satisfying to click into place. I think it's a testament to just how good The Witness's visual design is that these patterns work at all. Making a puzzle like this function and look clean in a 3D environment is hard enough, but then on top of that you've got to make it subtle enough to not be blatantly obvious the second you walk into a new area, and still visually look consistent and nice from every single angle. This is just a windmill. Wait a minute. This is just a beautiful bed of flowers. Unless... These are just some clouds in the sky. Still just clouds. Nothing to see here. It's genius design on practically every single front. Conceptually it's brilliant, thematically it's brilliant, artistically it's brilliant, as puzzles themselves they're brilliant. It's just brilliant. I fucking love it. And on the topic of good visual design and things I fucking love, the art direction. It's quite nice. This is one very pretty video game. So pretty, in fact, that I I'm just gonna say it. This is the prettiest one. Out of all of them. This one wins. Even when I was deep into my The Witness is fucking dog shit phase, I couldn't deny how good this game looked. Cause just look at it. Look at it. How, how did they make it look this nice? Black magic? 
Jonathan summoned the spirit of Da Vinci to his house to do the art direction for him? Ever since I saw a Wind Waker HD screenshot in an old Nintendo magazine, I have had a soft spot in my heart for games that look like this. The Wind Waker looks awesome, Firewatch is gorgeous, Persona 5 is very charming, but there's something about The Witness that just makes all of these look tame in comparison. I am not someone who would ever put game posters on my wall, I've been through that phase, I'm not going back, but I would very much like a canvas print of something from this game. Anything. Any frame. Even this one. I love all the colours, they're so bright and in your face, yet nothing clashes, it all blends together beautifully. There's forests bathed in bright greens, warm oranges, pinks, reds. The sea and the sky are these pristine blues, while the marsh is a beautiful blend of crimson, purple, cyan, swamp green. The intro is calm and inviting, some nice pale greens and purples. Reflection Island smacks you in the face with this striking red and orange colour palette, then you swap the tape over to the jungle, and look at that. Simple, soft greens. The bunker is a kaleidoscope of colours, all vying for your attention, while the town is all over the place. It's got a bit of everything. Because, you know, it literally does. But it's not just the colour palette, it's the ridiculous attention to detail, the landscaping, the perspective tricks that are hidden all over the place, the water. Oh my fucking lord, the water. The Witness still has, and will forever have, the best looking reflections in any video game. I don't give a shit how many ray tracing cores you put in your 10 grand graphics card, yes, that puddle looks pretty cool. But, counterpoint, The game sounds good too, really good. There's barely any music in the game, aside from the final challenge and a tiny little bit else here and there, but all of the sound design is wonderful. The gentle hum of a panel and the satisfying click when you solve it, love that. The sound these boxes make when you crack them open, love that. The sound design for the hidden puzzles, that's just music to my ears. The Atmos tracks too? Brilliant. Every last one, brilliant. I wrote a decent chunk of this video while listening to a big playlist of these, because the sound design is so good at immersing you into the world of the game. Whether it's a rushing waterfall, a half-demolished shed, a dingy, partially submerged shipwreck, or waves gently lapping against the shore. It all sounds beautiful. The island draws you in, holds you hostage, and never lets you go. You can stop at practically any point in the map, look around, and you've got yourself a living, breathing painting. It's wonderfully designed. So, yeah. I like The Witness now. I love The Witness now. Which feels weird to say after how much shit I've been throwing in its general direction for years. The director worked on The Witness, but I can't deny how much I enjoyed my time revisiting it. The puzzle design is consistently genius, the sound design is gorgeous, the art direction is fucking phenomenal. There's a kind of zen state that you end up in after a while that you just can't get from anything else. And then there's that extra layer of creative shit that the game does that I either completely forgot about or didn't even notice because god damn, god fucking damn, there are parts of this game that are absolutely delightful. So, high class, again, what have we learned today? Well, um, I was wrong. <laughs> Very wrong. Um, revisiting media that you might have hated before might surprise you. And, uh, I enjoyed the video game. I did it. So why is it still going around my head like a tumble dryer? Something I realised while playing through it again is that The Witness is two very different games to me. One of them is beautiful. 
charming, clever, and wonderfully inventive. And the other one is still shit. Know yourself. I already had a thousand thoughts and opinions about this game floating around in that head of mine, and now there's even more of them. Instead of the chorus of complaints singing from the heavens about how dog shit the witness is, it's now two choruses. All the things I love, and all the things I despise, going toe to toe at all times. In one breath my brain hates it, and in the other my brain loves it, and those two have to just coexist whenever I think about this game. Which made writing this video very fun. A hell of a lot has already been said about The Witness being pretentious. It's gotten to the point where the word pretentious doesn't even mean anything anymore, and it just ends up feeling like a buzzword. So, real quick, English lesson time, let's get up the definition! Right, uh, pretentious. Attempting to impress by affecting greater importance or merit than is actually possessed. Now, in a sense, that could describe me, but in another sense, that is such an on-the-nose, perfect description of this game that I'm not surprised it's become synonymous with the fucking thing. The Witness is a game about everything and nothing. It's a game with audio logs in it, but instead of being meaningless flavor text that rarely ever adds anything, they're meaningless flavor text that rarely ever adds anything, while also being quotes from Albert Einstein. It's a game with barely any story, because it's too smart to have one of those, and no definitive answers to any of the questions it sets up, because it's too smart for that either! What do the statues mean? Why does it end like that? What is the point of any of this? Why is it called The Witness? Let's ask lead game designer Jonathan Blow what the game is about. It, it's a game about looking at things and seeing them and knowing that you're looking at things and seeing them. So it tries to- What? What the fuck are you talking about?! I've spent the last month or two months or however fucking long of my life trying to wrestle with this game. Trying to understand and appreciate the parts of it that are very easy to write off as pretentious or nonsensical. I went and listened to a bunch of the audio logs I would have missed. I watched all the videos, even the hour-long one. I listened to the last set of audio logs you get just before the final challenge that actually sheds a tiny bit of light on the story. I watched The Unbearable Now, which is a really interesting analysis of the game. I read countless different interpretations of what it could be trying to say. I watched a bunch of interviews with Jonathan Blow where he talks about the game. I have immersed myself more in this game than probably some people who would give it a 10 out of 10. Just so I can say with unwavering certainty, I get absolutely nothing out of all of this. In any way whatsoever. The secret of Psalm 46 is pretty good, but that is literally it. The audio logs, and the videos, and the story, if you can even call it that. I'm going to the store, do you want a sandwich or something? Everything The Witness tries to do that isn't a puzzle, the presentation, or the atmosphere falls so flat on its face for me that it retroactively makes me like the parts of the game I actually like less because they're sharing space with this shit. Not to say that I don't think what the game is trying to say isn't interesting, because a lot of it is. I really like a lot of interpretations about The Witness. I've already said it, but I'll say it again. The Unbearable Now, really fucking good. Go watch it. After this video, I need the watch time. I like hearing about what people took away from a game that is effectively just this for 20 hours. It's a game about epiphanies. It's a game about itself and its development. It's a game about truth. Look at all this truth! Six whole types of truth! We got the whole family! It's a game about life... and death. But there's a difference between appreciating what other people took from a piece of art and taking something from the piece of art yourself. Nobody ever walked into this room and nobody is sitting on a chair The Unbearable Now is this beautiful, layered analysis that feels like the culmination of six months of excessively detailed research pinned up on one of those detective boards that brings every idea the game has together. 
Meanwhile, the witness itself feels like a jumbled mess, where to get anything out of the ideas it's putting forward, you have to spend six months doing excessively detailed research, pinning it all up on one of those detective boards just to have it make a lick of sense. This is structured, and this is virtually structureless. You could argue that's kind of the point, it's a puzzle game, piece together what convoluted bullshit Jonathan Blow made today, but to me that feels like a cop-out. There are puzzle games that explore big ideas that don't need a thesis paper written about them just to make sense. And those games often explore far more interesting ideas than The Witnesses, it's about looking at things and seeing them, and knowing you're looking at things and seeing them, TM. Chief, that's perception. And I hate to break it to you, but every puzzle game ever made is about perception. The Witness comes across like it's desperate for me to view it as art under a lens that isn't just artistic for a video game. It's not enough for it to just be a very good puzzle game with a mystery and a resolution. It also has to be about philosophy and religion and the creative process and science versus art and perspective and a bunch of other shit. And all of this stuff isn't really explored in the game itself. Perspective might be, but science versus art definitely isn't. It's all done through quotes from famous people or an hour long video I have to sit and watch in a video game. You know, those things you play with your fingers, it has to sit there and practically demand you interpret it, because the game itself sure isn't going to give you any hints. Work it out, fuckface. It feels like it's embarrassed to be a video game. It feels like it's constantly trying to prove to me that it's more than its contemporaries. And look, Jonathan Blow has borderline said as much in interviews. But here's the thing. You don't need to justify the fact that your art, not to me, not to a massive chunk of the people playing your game, maybe to Soldier Boy, but that's besides the point. This little guy in a, in a suit and he walk around. They're, they're not seeing the most important thing. Games are art. Celeste, Breath of the Wild, Disco Elysium, The Stanley Parable, Outer Wilds, Dark Souls, Katamari, Fez, Bioshock, Inside, Undertale, Dwarf Fortress, Earthbound, Oberdin, Pentiment, Minecraft, fucking Tetris, fucking Mario! Yeah, the kind of people that visit art galleries and talk about a canvas with some white paint on it like it's the peak of human expression are probably gonna turn up their nose at a game about solving line puzzles. But what do you care? You're in good company. The first hidden puzzle you stumble across. The way you unlock the secret ending. Every single insanely creative outside the box puzzle the game pulls out of its bottomless hat. I made the sound of a howler monkey solving one of the puzzles in this game. I grinned like I've never grinned before when I spotted this. The final challenge? I didn't do it, I will happily admit that I am not smart enough for that, but I can only imagine how incredible mastering this fucked up psychotic nightmare must feel. Those are magical moments that only video games can do. So why are you wasting my time trying to justify the fact that you're important and you have something to say when you already are and do? I'm about to go off topic for a second, but stick with me. I played Tunic last year. And if you've played it before, you probably already know where I'm going with this, but if you haven't yet, this is your warning. I'm about to spoil literally everything. If you haven't played it before and don't care about getting the brilliant twist of this game ruined for you, imagine a 2D Zelda game, but the mechanics and controls are only explained through a guidebook you collect page by page as you play through the game. Here's the page that teaches you how to run, or upgrade a stat, or where to go next, stuff like that. Towards the end of the game, the manual teaches you how to open these doors that you've been running past the whole time. And it's a cheat code, literally. You go down right, up left, up right on the d-pad, and... But then you get statues with different patterns, and eventually it clicks that this isn't some random combination. It's the route the path takes, down right, up left, up right. So if you input this path's route instead... Ta-da! 
then it twists again as you realize, oh wait, those paths are hidden fucking everywhere, all over the place. The game has been teasing you this whole time and you didn't even realize it. And then it hits you with this. I didn't have the brain power to work out what this meant, so I had to look it up, probably on IGN, but even if you look it up, it still hits the same. HOLY SHIT! These numbers all link to pages in the book, and every page in the book has a pattern. That's genius! With capital everything, bold everything, italic everything, 70 point font, highlighted, underlined, hyperlinked to a picture of Albert Einstein. I bring this up because the parallels between these two games are hilarious. Both games are full of puzzles to solve, although one of them is way more focused on that than the other. Both of them have multiple oh shit moments in them. Both of them use a line moving around a grid as its main puzzle type. Both of them explore perspective and how a game can completely flip on its head with the right bit of information. Both of them had multiple puzzles in that made me break out Photoshop to solve. And both of them are deeply flawed in one way or another. In Tunic, it's the boss fights, which are so fucking shit, they're easily the worst out of any game I've ever played. In The Witness, it's the big ideas it tries to put across, which it does so fucking badly, it's easily the worst attempt at it out of any video game I've ever played. And yet, Tunic is one of the best games I've ever played. And The Witness... isn't. So, what's the difference here? What makes Tunic a masterpiece to me, and The Witness a game I'm talking about in a video with this title? Well, Tunic doesn't force me to break out a corkboard or watch a video to understand what it's trying to put across. It doesn't waste my time with stuff that ultimately builds to nothing. And... The ending is good. It's so good. Elden Ring came out last year. I beat the final boss first fucking time, and this moment was still the highlight of all the games I played in 2022. It's not just that it's the puzzle to end all puzzles, it's a beautiful love letter to the joy of discovery and the magic of old bullshit NES games. This whole game, you've been staring at a manual, trying to understand what any of it means. So it's fitting that the final secret is unlocked by piecing together every tiny little detail that thing holds. And what is the final secret? What else? The final page. The witness ends with a dude eating some custard creams. In what universe does a video game with all of these wonderful ideas settle on the most boring, trite conclusion possible? How? How and why? I do not understand how we got here. Is it a joke? Is that the point? The piss bottle would suggest that. The custard creams would suggest that. But it's being presented with so much fucking careful deliberation that I have to assume they're being genuine. But even if it is a joke, what are you doing ending your Hall of Fame puzzle game with a joke? Why are you settling on a joke? What the fuck? You could do anything, make the whole island a top-down puzzle, give the single best idea in your game the most mind-blowing conclusion possible. Even the challenge, that's a way better ending than all of this shit. Why is it tucked away like an easter egg when the fucking piss bottle video should be the easter egg? What are you doing? Why? 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 I very briefly mentioned the looker at the start of the video, which, as the name implies, is a parody of The Witness. It's like an hour long, it's consistently hilarious. I said this about it when I finished it and I still stand by that. But what baffles me is that this game has the better ending. A free-to-play parody game does a better job wrapping up what it's trying to say than the game that it's taking the piss out of. And it's a fucking knob gag. Oh wait, it's a giant cop.
I have been writing this video for almost two months now. I have rewritten and thrown out so many parts of this project so many times. I have gotten to the point where I don't even want to work on it anymore. I would rather gouge out my eyes than see another frame of this fucking game. And yet here I am, yet again, rewriting the script. Look at me go! Why am I wasting so much of my time trying to get the Witness video to be perfect? Who the fuck is even gonna care? Who's gonna fucking watch it? It won't stop the smug comments from rolling in. Ah, you see, the Witness is a piece of refined intellect that is lost on simpletons such as yourself. Just, you know, have a couple more swear words. What have I gained from doing this? What was the point? I haven't come to a conclusion. I haven't answered my burning question. Hello, you little shits. What did we learn today? <laughs> Nothing! It's still going around my head like a tumble dryer. If anything, it's going faster. It's going Mac 10. I'm losing my mind trying to come to terms with this bastard of a video game. I think I want to love it. Unconditionally, I mean. Without having to bring up the caveat, yeah, it's it's pretty cool, but, but it also makes me want to scream a thousand screams whenever I think about that Rupert Spiro video. Awareness, the only one that knows or is aware. I can talk for hours about how much I love the puzzle design and the imagination and the visuals. John, if you're watching, please add a photo mode. And I want to be able to say that, hey, this one, holy shit, what a video game. Give me another one, shove it down my esophagus. But there's so much in The Witness that drives me up the wall. The kind of stuff that makes me lose my mind at how a game this close to being perfect biffed the landing so fucking badly. Even back in 2018, when I hated it more than anything, I couldn't bring myself to leave it alone. Because I knew there was something there. I couldn't write it off completely. I couldn't just give it a 3 out of 10 and walk away. Because there was a glimmer of something magic in that ball of shit. I've never had a game that has torn me as much as this one. I've played loads of games before that split me straight down the middle. Games with brilliant ideas and kind of jank execution. Games that I had the highest of expectations for and still fell flat on their face. 
but I've never had one that completely ripped me in two like this. The Witness has some of my favourite puzzle design ever. The Witness has some of my favourite visual design ever. The Witness has a world I want to get lost in. The Witness made me clap like a seal, grin like an insane person, and cheer at the top of my lungs. Fucking dribbling everywhere, Jesus Christ! The Witness should be one of my favourite games. And it isn't. The Witness is pretentious as shit. The Witness is a mess of ideas that only makes sense to this guy and anyone willing to do a dissertation on it. The Witness has two endings that are so bad they retroactively make me resent the last 20 hours. The Witness presented me with one of the most wonderful ideas ever and then proceeded to do practically nothing with it. The Witness should be one of my least favourite games. And it isn't. I hate The Witness. I love The Witness. And that's fine. Oh, fucking thing. There's a part of me that wants to dress a game or a movie or anything that I can have an opinion on up in a nice bow, put it in its little corner, these are the good ones, these are the not so good ones, these ones make me want to stab someone. The goal of a review, or a retrospective, or a video essay, or whatever the fuck I make, is to get to a conclusion by the end. All of this is to serve a point. It's all building up to a grand statement. I like this game. It good. I don't like this game. It bad. This game made me feel like an 80 year old man. But with The Witness, I lost track of my point a couple weeks ago. I haven't gone through an arc. I haven't reached a grand realization. I don't even really know what my opinion is. Do I like it? Do I hate it? I don't know. The Witness is so unique because it kind of defies definition. But at the same time, that's the thing that draws me to it. That's the reason it's been at the back of my mind for years now. Not because it was good, or bad, but because I could never put my finger on how I should feel about it. Do I like it? Do I hate it? I don't know. But that's fine. That's the witness. I can't think of another game that I've held bitter resentment towards for half a decade, only to almost completely 180 on it after giving it another shot. I can't think of another game that ricochets so fast between the sublime and the shite. I can't think of another game that made me spend two months of my life analysing every corner of it just to come to the conclusion that I can't come to a conclusion about this. I can't think of another game that makes me feel like The Witness does. It's a mess. It's a masterpiece. It's borderline nonsensical. It's a beautiful explosion of creativity. It's art. It's art. It's one of the worst games I've ever played. It's one of the best games I've ever played. I hate The Witness. I love The Witness. Fuck this game. Five stars. Are we recording? We rec okay. Right. Uh, right. Special thanks to the patrons. K KV Wav? Is that? K sorry, Kavi Wav. Kane. K How the fuck do I. Bruff. Kane Bruff. Morgan. Maple Pie. Task, do I say the underscore? Task underscore failure. Sad. That's, that's capitalized. Um, Vincent Skullman. And Angle. Uh, Angel. Is that it? Oh, uh, and thank you for watching. Are we done? You seen any any movies recently? You, you gonna see that new Little Mermaid that just came out? Looks pretty good.
the graphics on the fish, goddamn. 